A fact of every school is teachers will eat anything. Bring any kind of leftovers and leave it in the teacher's break room. It will disappear faster than your brother-in-law on moving day. Leave something sweet in the teacher's break room and someone might chew your arm off before you can set it down. A rock misplaced in a donut box is not safe. It's amazing, really. You can't make this stuff up. Some of the most patient and inspirational teachers in any school will be found teaching special education students. Children with learning and physical or developmental disabilities are some of the most challenging students. You're probably asking yourself, did this guy hit his head on something hard? No, 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 not yet, but I promise if you'll hang with me, I'll make some sense of this and connect the dots before the end of the video. Teachers must have a special heart to face these challenges every day. The goal for special education students, or SPED students as they are often referred, is for each student to achieve their highest level. That level is determined very specifically for each student and adjusted at least annually. Schools invest a great amount of time and resources in this area to provide an education for the special education population. However, let me reiterate, it can't be overstated. The special education teacher and the special education aides are amazing. They're worth their weight in gold. Now for today's story. This was a much bigger school than I had worked at previously. I discovered something new every day. I was working in my office one morning when some of the students brought me cookies. I had been at this school for only two short months. This routine had been going on nearly every week. One week it was cake the next time pie, and cookies. Lots of cookies. I don't mind admitting that my waistline and I looked forward to these visits. A small group of students marched into my office and presented their goods. The cookies were still warm and the chocolatey goodness permeated my small work area. The cookies were some kind of fancy chocolate with icing on top. Yum! <laughs> I greedily ate one of the several they presented and thanked them profusely. I then proceeded to compliment them on how great they tasted and then chatted with them as had become our custom. The students went on to explain with some animation how they made the dough and with the teacher's help, put it on the cookie sheet. Then one of them turned on the oven, placed the cookie sheet inside the oven and then waited for the timer. This was a fun interaction I enjoyed immensely. This made some of the other interactions in my office worthwhile. I knew, of course, these students were SPED students and the food preparation was part of a larger curriculum referred to as life skills class. Life skills classes encompassed many areas of necessary life training for SPED students, including cooking. The students always seemed happy with their visit, promising to bring me more of whatever they were cooking next week. They left my office after their short visit and returned to their classroom. The fancy little cookies didn't survive long as they were the perfect addition to my morning cup of coffee. I left my office a few minutes later. The outer office was also the school entrance and was home to several people who really ran the school. Two were secretaries, another one did attendance, and still another was responsible for purchasing. Their shared duties included answering the phones, greeting visitors, and babysitting the school's administration team. Their combined experiences were invaluable especially for a newbie admin that didn't know the lay of the land. As I passed one of their desks, I noticed the students had delivered cookies to them also. I guess I'd never noticed this before. Knowing what I did about teachers and sweets, I knew these cookies would be goners in short order. I admit I was tempted to snatch one. After a few meetings and other business of the school day, I returned to the reception area sometime later. I couldn't believe the wonderful little chocolate morsels were still on her desk. As I reached down to rescue one for myself, I caught several of my coworkers staring at me. My hand froze on its way to my mouth as I looked down at the attendance clerk. She seemed to be watching me like I was next in line for the bungee jump. At the same time, I scanned the reception area. To my surprise, there were chocolate cookies in every trash can. As she continued to watch me, she reaches over and deposits the rest of her cookies into the trash. The only one not looking at me was my secretary. 
My secretary was a tremendously talented assistant who had helped me avoid several landmines in the short time I'd been there. I was very fortunate to work with her, but she had a wicked sense of humor and a well-deserved, as I was about to learn, reputation for practical jokes. The attendance clerk leans forward and says to me in a quiet tone, Have you been to the life skills area when the students are cooking? Hmm, no. Mrs. Smith teaches special education students and is a rock star teacher. She can get students to learn and accomplish near miracles. I don't have words to describe the difficulty of being successful in this environment. The more I was exposed to her, the more I respected her God-given talent. I stopped by Mrs. Smith's life skills classroom. I asked her about the cooking. I thanked her for the pie, cake, and especially the cookies, and told her they were very tasty. She looks at me with a concerned, almost panicky look on her face. She said, you know, the students said you ate the cookies, but I thought they were exaggerating. You ate some? I think to myself, this is not good. She goes on to explain that most of the food preparation is far below any appropriate sanitary standards. She said much of it happens on regular student desks or activity tables as there's not enough space in the small kitchen. All of the students get a chance to contribute, which, especially in cold and runny nose season, makes it less than appetizing. Mrs. Smith goes on to state, I don't even let the students eat the cookies most of the time. She laughs. Half the dough ends up on the floor or blessed with a giant sneeze before it ever makes it into the oven. I tell my students the cookies are for them to show off to the principal and the other adults in the front office. I always let your assistant know that the cookies should not be eaten. She goes on to say, you know, the students have enjoyed delivering the food to you this year more than any other year I can recall. I told you my assistant had a wicked sense of humor. You can't make this stuff up. Ugh. <sighs>